There are many types of paganism, like Hellenism, Asatru, heathenry, Wicca, and more. So it can be really confusing to tell them apart. What makes each of them stand out and how do they differ? We can broadly classify paganism into five main categories. While all pagan paths fall into at least one of these categories, some can overlap and fall into two, three, or even more. The five categories are Reconstructionist Paganism, Neo-Paganism, Nature and Earth-Centric Paths, Regional and Ethnic Traditions, and Shamanistic Traditions. Let's start with Reconstructionist Paganism. Reconstructionist Paganism is about bringing back the old religious beliefs and practices from ancient times. Reconstructionist Pagans want to follow the ancient practices as closely and accurately as possible. They use historical texts, archaeological findings, and scholarly research to try to recreate ancient rituals and beliefs as closely as possible, and don't want to mess around by changing anything. Pretty much every ancient pagan tradition can fall into this category because there will always be someone trying to follow an ancient practice exactly so. Here are some of the more popular pagan types that have been reconstructed in modern times. Hellenism focuses on the ancient Greek religion, worshipping gods of the Greek pantheon, like Zeus, Hera, and Athena. It celebrates Greek culture and the wisdom of the ancients. Kemetism highlights the ancient Egyptian religion, honoring gods like Isis, Ra, and Osiris. They use Egyptian rituals and magic and take inspiration from hieroglyphs and temples. Religio Romana is a reconstruction of the ancient Roman religion, with the Roman pantheon at the center. They follow Roman customs and festivals, incorporating ancient Roman values and philosophy into modern life. Norse and Germanic paganism can be divided into heathenry and asatru. Heathenry is broad and includes Anglo-Saxon and continental German traditions. Heathen communities often place a strong emphasis on kinship and living according to a set of ethical principles known as the Nine Noble Virtues. The Asatru, on the other hand, focuses specifically on the Norse pantheon, mainly the Aesir, which includes gods like Odin, Thor, and Frigg. Both heathenry and Asatru celebrate festivals based on the Norse calendar, revere gods and goddesses from Norse mythology, and draw spiritual insights from ancient Norse texts, like the Eddas and Sagas. Celtic pagans follow the ancient Celtic religions from Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, worshipping gods and goddesses like Brigid and Cernunos, and celebrate Celtic festivals. Now let's move on to modern pagan movements that have grown in recent years. This is known as neo-paganism. Witchcraft is one of the most prominent types of all the neo-pagan movements. It isn't about witches with pointy hats riding on brooms, but rather about practicing rituals, casting spells, and connecting deeply with nature, using natural energies and elements to bring about change and personal empowerment. From the types of witchcraft, the fastest growing and most prominent is Wicca. Wicca is a modern pagan witchcraft religion founded in the mid-20th century. It's known for its worship of a goddess and a god its celebration of seasonal festivals known as Sabbaths, and its use of magic and ritual. Wiccans follow a moral code expressed in the Wiccan Reed, and it harm none, do what you will, emphasizing personal responsibility and harmlessness. Wicca values nature, sees the divine in all things, and often involves practices like casting spells, divination, and working with natural energies. Wicca can be further divided into subcategories. These differ based on the founder and the specific traditions, rituals, beliefs, and practices they emphasize. Gardnerian Wicca. Founded by Gerald Gardner, this tradition is secretive and members have to be initiated into it. It focuses on rigid rituals, coven practices, and a duotheistic worship of the god and goddess. Alexandrian Wicca. Started by Alex Sanders, it places more emphasis on ceremonial magic and has a more eclectic approach to ritual and practice. Dianic Wicca, founded by Zuzana Budapest, this is a more feminist form of Wicca. Followers only worship the goddess, and there's a big focus on female empowerment and spirituality. 
Other types of witchcraft include traditional witchcraft, which is more localized and follow pre-Wiccan traditions, hedge witchcraft, which focuses on solitary practice and is centered around nature and divination, green witchcraft, which, as the name suggests, centers around the use of plants and herbs, eclectic witchcraft, where you can basically mix and match and do whatever suits you. There are many more types of witchcraft, but most of these are smaller in scope and localized. Moving on from witchcraft, let's check out the other prominent types of neo-paganism. Neo-Druidism focuses on the traditions of the ancient Druids, who were important leaders in Celtic societies. Main ideas of Neo-Druidism include a big love for nature, celebrating changes in seasons, and learning from ancient Celtic myths and lore. Because of the limited historical records about the original Druids, much of Neo-Druidism is based on interpretation and a lot of guesswork, which is why we included them in this category and not the Reconstructionist category, as there's not much known about Druids to reconstruct. Next, we have Eclectic Paganism. As the name suggests, this is a mix-and-match approach, where you can pick the beliefs and practices from pagan and non-pagan traditions to create your own religious path. Some people like this approach as it allows you to choose what works and discard what doesn't. This brings us to revivalist paganism, which is also a form of neo-paganism. Revivalists are similar to reconstructionists, because they both seek to bring ancient pagan practices into modern times. But they differ in how they approach this. While Reconstructionists want to reconstruct the exact religion in the 21st century, Revivalists are simply trying to revive ancient pagan practices. They draw inspiration from ancient traditions, but are more flexible in adapting and interpreting these practices to suit contemporary spiritual needs and context. Wicca, which we've already discussed, is the perfect example of revivalist paganism, as it is a flexible approach to ancient witchcraft with many modern elements. Again, most types of ancient paganism can fall into revivalist paganism. Moving on to nature and earth-centric paths, these emphasize reverence for the natural world and often view the earth as sacred. Pantheism sees God in everything, literally, they don't see God as a distinct entity. Instead, God is found in everything in the universe. Animism is one of the oldest spiritual practices. Animists believe that everything has a soul or spirit and should be respected. They see a vibrant world where animals, plants, rivers, mountains, and even man-made objects like tools or houses have an animated life force. Then we have shamanism. Central to shamanism is the figure of the shaman, a person who claims to communicate with the spirit world, often for purposes of healing, divination, and guiding the community. Shamans enter trance states, achieved through rituals, drumming, dancing, or plant medicines to journey into spiritual realms. Shamanistic practices are deeply connected to nature and often involve reverence for ancestral spirits and natural elements. Shamanism is found worldwide and is one of the oldest forms of spirituality. And finally, there are belief systems specific to certain geographical regions. These regional or ethnic traditions can vary, reflecting the unique landscapes and histories of the regions. Baltic, Slavic, and Finnish paganism are some popular types. Did we miss any pagan paths? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us to grow so we can keep making more videos like this for our amazing community of like-minded thinkers. Thanks for watching.